Hi everyone, thanks for watching this short demo of Adobe Spark, which is an online and mobile design application. I want to point out this link right here, tinyurl.com backslash tpsdemo dash Adobe Spark v2. This will bring you to an online PDF summary of my notes about Adobe Spark, which I will discuss in more detail in my Zoom recording. That PDF has links to all of the websites and pages I show in the demo, including a link to the quick graphic creation video embedded into this tutorial, in case you want to view that alone. It is, I have to admit, following me making a not that great graphic, but you will get an idea of how Spark works for that type of production. That PDF also has my contact info, so if you have any questions, let me know. So let's jump into Zoom. All right, hello folks. Um, so I've just shared with you the same link, which will bring you to this PDF that has basically a summary of the information that the TPS and conference folks asked me to cover in this demo. It'll give you a brief overview of what Adobe Spark is, some of the ways that I've used it, what's nice about it, what's less good about it. Uh, the hint here is accessibility and um, some of the benefits and different ways to use it and how you sign up and get uh, Adobe Spark in addition to my content information if anyone has any questions. Um, so you all have that and I will cover also some of these topics in the video portion. So let's jump right into Spark. Um, so as mentioned, Spark is an online and mobile design tool, um, especially for folks who are design challenged, aesthetically challenged, maybe don't have a graphic design uh, background, which is why I started playing around with Spark. This is the first time in my career where I've been especially trying to make material, particularly asynchronous learning material that folks are gonna con you know, look at online. And I was hoping maybe I can make it look a little bit nicer. So that's why I turned to Spark. Um, and it's basically a spot where they give you a bunch of templates, color palettes, font uh, options to work on either graphics that you're gonna use in social media or download, uh, videos, which I have not tried, or what they call Adobe Pages which are basically one page websites um, that are nice and responsive. So what happens when you sign into Adobe Spark? It's gonna say, hello, Blake here, what would you like to make? And you can see there's lots of um, graphic options, you know, tied to social media, but that would be sort of their size, photo collages. This presentation mode is that page that I mentioned. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'll insert into this video a little video that I made working on some graphics. really easy to, um, I think the video is attached to this one, to edit those projects, to duplicate them if I want to open this and play around with it again and change the color schemes or change the text or reuse it. Um, and I do think actually the graphic making in Adobe Spark is pretty nice and I think I'm going to continue to use it for that purpose. Um, it's really easy to work with, download those options and they have some nice templates. Um, but the first way that I started using Sp Spark was actually um, to create uh, web pages uh, for these hyperlink lesson plans. And I'm going to jump over to a Google document now to show you all how this started. So this is a lesson plan for a class that I supported this summer, CHC201H. Um, and this is just a Google document laying out some resources and links and content for that class. Um, and you can see here, it basically has an introduction. It has some learning outcomes telling the students what they're going to encounter and learn in this document and through this lesson plan. 
And then there's sort of various steps that they move through. And this is a hyperlink document because it has links out to material. Um, this is a playlist style, uh, which means it moves them through steps, as you can see, one, two, three of content to work for. You can also make menu style hyperlink documents, um, which gives a little bit more student choice. Um, and in that research document that I shared with you all at the beginning, I have some links to places where I learn more about hyperlink documents and the ways that teachers are using them, particularly asynchronously for students. But you can see this walks through students through various steps. You know, first step is to meet me, and this links out to a video that I made on my iPhone just saying hello to people. The second step is introduction to my department, and students get a choice. They can watch three little videos about us that I made, or they can link to pages on our website and read about that. And then they can, you know, again, introduce the Du Bois with some content, audio, video, and it sort of takes them through various steps. Some of these activities are interactive. This is a Google form activity. There's a Padlet activity here. Um, and then there's, you know, a reflection questionnaire, a Google form at the end. So this is fine, um, but I was thinking some of these students are gonna be accessing this via their phones. I was, you know, it looks a little plain just being a grid. So I was playing around with Spark and wondering, can I make this lesson plan a little bit more uh, interesting to look at and responsive, particularly for people looking at it on their phone. So this is gonna be this exact same lesson plan, but now over in Spark. So here's what it looks like. So again, it has that same title, but now you can see, you know, it's responsive. This looks great on your phones. Um, there's some graphic content, that same learning outcomes and information at the beginning. But here are those steps, right? The first step is meet me. And instead of having to link out to that video, I can just embed it right in this page. Here's step two, right? You get to make a choice. Do you wanna watch these three videos? Or do you wanna to go to our website, these buttons link out to our, our website and you can do that. So this is that same lesson plan, right? Um, but just presented through Spark and you make it in Spark and then you get a link to share with students and they can come here and directly. And again, this links out to that Google form activity. So it's really the same content. It's just presented in a way where things are a little bit more embedded and a little bit more responsive. I wanna show you how easy it is to work on these. So here's that same project and I'm gonna edit that project. I could make a copy of it if I wanted to use this as a template for another project, but I'm gonna edit it in here and just show you all how easy it is to add to these. Um, particularly when I had that baseline Google Doc, it was really easy to just sort of cut and paste things from my Google Doc. So you can see these buttons in here and this is where you add content. So if I want to add a video, um, I think I have a video about primary sources loaded up. I can just say, add that video, put in the YouTube feed, and here it is. Now in that document will be my understanding primary sources and secondary sources video. Um, it, you can add all other types of things. If I wanna add a bunch of photo, photos in here, I can have some, uh, I have some photos lined up um, about the Vietnam uh, protests. So I'm just gonna select all of them. We'll see how that goes. Adobe Spark will put those into a grid for me. I can see, uh, you know, maybe this looks a little bit big. So I will delete that large photo. Now I have this grid of photos and now that's in my Adobe Spark page. And if I want to preview those changes that I made, it'll load it up. This is what those changes will look like. So it does take a little time to load these, which I have warned students about when I have been sharing uh, Spark links with them. But you can see now it's that same document, but that video I entered is now in here. This nice photo collage that I made, which again, you could download separately or you can enter it into a Spark page the way I did. And now that's part of this living um, web page for students. The issues with Spark uh, that are nice is how easy it is to use and how graphic it looks and the responsiveness. Uh, the ne negative issues are the accessibility issues, it's really hard to, I think almost impossible to add um, alternative text statements for photos and it's not super great. So I'm gonna start playing around in terms of this use, making these hyperlinked pages probably in Microsoft Sway, maybe in Scalar and a few of the other um, presentation software pieces that are out there. But I sort of liked learning Spark first. This was my training wheels. 
and uh, you can sort of move on to more complicated setups later. But uh, I def definitely recommend Spark still for the graphic uh, work that you can do in it in terms of making those photo collages and some of their um, graphics that I've made in here. It's really easy, so I'm going to keep using it for that. So please get in touch if you have any questions, and uh, thanks.